get started because it's uh, 7.35 and um, I think there might be as many as three more people coming, but I know one of them is going to be late. So um, come on in, Sheila. We're just getting started. Okay. Um, there are two items on the agenda tonight. Tonight is a special meeting and therefore we're not going to approve any minutes. Uh, we have two items on the agenda. The first has been accomplished a little bit. We all wanted to meet Dr. Adley. And we want to give you a chance to, if you want to say something, um, if you want us to tell you something about the RTM that you don't already know, or if you want to know whether um, what this committee does, we'll be happy to answer. But we'd like to hear from you first. Okay. Um, this, this is a good spot. You could sit with us if you, you're not. <laughs> whatever you want to do. That's perfect. Right. Is this okay? Yeah. <laughs> you want to sit at a table. Uh, well, uh, good evening, everybody. And it's, um, thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to come. Actually, I'd like to learn from you a little bit too, right? Because I've heard what you do, but it'd be nice to hear the, the perspectives on that and your role in the process and how you interact with the Board of Education and your role just generally in government. Um, so that'll be helpful for me just for a wee bit of context. Um, but I'm delighted to be here. Um, these people are, are probably sick of hearing like sort of a spiel a wee bit, so um, I'll just do a wee abbreviated a thing. Um, so uh, my wife, Pamela, right, and uh, she's a nurse, and I have two boys, uh, Christopher and Scott, um, both I don't know what happened, but they both went into the food industry. Um, but they're happy and they're doing their thing and uh, they're in Hartford, so. Um, I have been a superintendent for, for 11 years, I think you know that, and I've been up in Granby for 22. Uh, so I don't tend to move around a little bit, and um, I will say that uh, I was excited about this opportunity, because you don't, listen, the reality is you don't get an opportunity too often to come to the premier school system and, and stay and across the nation in many ways, okay? So that, that, that only comes once in your lifetime, and so it took a long opportunity for me to contemplate my wife and I as a, a, uh, a big move, potentially considering that. Um, meeting the board, I was delighted to see that our, our values and uh, what they were seeking sort of aligned, I think, to kind of what I might be able to bring. Um, so it was a big decision, actually, to leave uh, the comfort, in many ways, of, of, of Granby, for those of you who know the area a little bit. Um, but it's a, 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 it's a big commitment uh, from a family and a professional commitment and um, I'm looking forward to uh, making that commitment and being here. And honestly, the biggest thing I hope I can bring to this uh, system in many ways is just sustained leadership. Because um, I think uh, it's hard to build coherent systems and uh, accomplish things and some of the, maybe even some of the frustrations you have to address um, if there's inconsistent leadership over a period of time. So. Uh, I think, as I'm going to say, the board is of the same disposition, uh, all things being equal, and um, uh, I'm thrilled uh, with the support of the board. Uh, right, from, right from the interview process, it was clear uh, to tell that this is a classy place to be, um, a very professional place to be, and I'm just delighted to be here and excited to be here. Everybody has been, well, not happy, everybody, not every situation, perhaps, right? I uh, <laughs> have to deal with some things, you can't make everyone happy, um, but honestly, I felt a warm, uh, invitation, uh, been a warm hospitality attended by the, uh, the public and the staff and uh, town officials and, and everybody I've met. It's just been terrific to be here and I'm very excited. I'm getting used to a few things. Not everything's easy, like the traffic. But that's part of the deal, right? Um, but I knew that, okay? Um, you never know until you experience it, I guess, right? But um, there's lots of things are unique about the place. I will tell you this. I uh, walked to the high school yesterday, or not yesterday, the day before. And I went into the library and I met, uh, which that library is always full. Like, I mean, that library is pretty much every period is full. You would know. Hard yes. So I met with some, some students. I just sat down and had a wee conversation with different groups of students. And I asked a, a basic question to them, which, what do you value most about, what's so special about this school? And to a, to a person, they said the staff was terrific. And that's what makes the place. And I don't know if you can get a bigger testament than that, to be honest with you. Uh, cool. And that was the other attraction to here because you have an exceptionally talented and committed staff. That, that was clear before I came, and that was reaffirmed, and it's been reaffirmed since I've been here. So um, I'm delighted to be here and uh, assume the reins and work with people. And, um, you know, I'm a kid person too, to be honest with you. I get a wee bit of a fix now and again, just uh, uh, seeing what we do benefits the kids. Uh, that's a wee bit of who I am, and um, 
You'll see that as we come out of a little bit, but um, just delighted to come to you. We're delighted to see you. I was thinking maybe we'd go around and introduce ourselves again. Um, Justin, why don't you say a little bit about yourself, what, why you want to be on this committee, why you like the RTM, what maybe you think Dr. Adley um, might like to know. Just uh, maybe if you want to say you have kids in the school district or you don't or whatever. Um, why don't you go first? Uh, Edward Sheka, I um, lived in Darien since 2003. Both my kids have gone through the school system, one's at college, one's a junior at high school. Um, when I joined the RTM, because I had kids in the system, this was a committee that was interesting for me. And spends, we, we are involved with sort of spending a lot of the town's money, so that was a factor as well. Thank you. Interesting. Uh, Barbara Thorne. Uh, the famous. The famous. <laughs> <laughs> something or anonymous. Why am I still here? Well, really, <laughs> Thank God you are. <laughs> because I have a perspective and a history, and I really care about the system, and I care about kids. Uh, Teresa Vogt. I have two kids at the high school. My daughter's a senior. My son is a sophomore. Um, I guess the RTM seemed like a natural progression after being a PTO chair and doing other stuff at the schools. Um, and I wanted to be on the education committee because I care about the schools and I wanted to actually be able to vote <laughs> um, on the budget. Um, I'm Janet Grogan. I've been on the RTM for many, many years. Uh, I went to Darien High School. My children graduated. I um, have substitute taught in Darien. I substitute teach in Stanford. Now, I um, majored in political science. I was a, did I say this already, a high school PTO chair. I was a CDSP chairman um, and royal. And um, I certainly like education and very happy to be here. And meet you. I'm Ann Reed. Um, let's see, I got involved with CDSP through Middlesex Middle School and I ran the budget process um, for the middle school and then for the CDSP process when my son was in eighth grade. He did not go to Darien High School, but I'm pretty adept at learning about what goes on at, at uh, all the schools. I've been on the RTM for f four years, and I've been on the Education Committee the entire time. Hey, good evening. My name is Peter Marushek. I uh, joined this committee uh, last this, this year, I guess. I have two kids in the, high school, in the system, in elementary school and middle school level, but I view my position my role in this committee more as representing all the people, even the people, you know, on the RTM, educating them about what's happening, and also those who don't have a, who don't have kids in the school system. Mm -hmm. You know, we had had a lot of expenses. You know, the, the budget went from 90 million to 100 million over the last five years for the school system. So, you know, um, that's that's what I'm more about. Hi, I'm Sharon Lee. I've lived here for 40 years now. My daughters went through the Darien system. Uh, I've taught kindergarten through ninth grade, and I was an elementary principal. And all that time, I didn't have time to be involved in the town, and I care very much about education, and I'm excited to be here to kind of pay back. Why don't you go next? I'll go Karina Magoi. I have two girls, one in the middle school, one in the high school. Um, I got involved with Oxridge and the PTO and did several things there, but I mainly I'm not a U.S. or was not a U.S. citizen, and I felt that this country has given me a lot, and I felt I had to be back somehow. So in 2016, I got involved with the RTM. That's when I started my my involvement with the town. My husband thinks I'm absolutely insane and berserk, <laughs> <laughs> like many other husbands, I'm sure. Um, and I joined the education committee because I have two girls going to school. We came from private school abroad, and I felt like I needed to know more, and the way to find and know more was getting involved with the RTM and the education committee. I'm Clara Sartori. I have two children who are adults. Um, I was, I've done a lot of volunteer things in Darien, and I thought that I could be useful to this committee. I was on um, the TGSNA, Town Government Service and Administration, and we did the blight ordinance, and I just thought, okay, we did, did that, so I'll try something else. And I thought I could be useful here because um, I know a lot of the issues, and yet I don't have children in the school system anymore, and I think it's easier to be a little more outspoken when you don't have to worry about the impact on your child 
that you know an unpleasant question might have or you know a statement might have. So anyway, not that there are that many of those, but um, anyway, so that's why I got involved here, and um, you know it's been a positive experience. And you were on the board. She's yeah. on the board of ed. She's leaving out the key. Part. She's leaving out the part that she was on the board of ed. <laughs> <laughs> for yes. many years. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> Lots of years. Um, so anyway, Liza, we were just going around introducing ourselves and talking a little bit about you know our situation, why we're here. So if you want to go. I'm go. sorry, I'm late. Um, that's all right. They, the reschedule screwed up my carpool. I'm Liza, <laughs> um, and. I have five kids. I have three, um, actually three in grade school, one in the ELP program, and then another in preschool. Um, and I'm pretty new to the committee. This is my first year. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I have to say you've got the basis covered, I think, mm -hmm. with the service and the experience that everybody has here. But pick up on two remarks, if I may. Okay. Barb, you talked about the history, right? Uh, I, I, I sort of I didn't mention this, but the, uh, I intend to honor the, the rich traditions and history that you have here and actually build upon the successes and work of the staff and those who've gone before me. Um, and I look to do, I look to build upon those in a thoughtful and respectful way. Um, you mentioned about the uh, American Dream and uh, another thing, uh, my wife and I came here for the American Dream. My kids have found it and uh, I think I found it here too, so thank you. I think it's great that you pointed out that you want to honor what was done before because that's not often said here because, you know, a lot of times people concentrate on what went wrong and how they're going to fix something. But I, I like that you said that you want to kind of stand on the shoulders of the people who went before. And I think that's very positive. Do you have any questions for us? Um, I mean, we can, I can tell you about what we do. We all can do that. Or um, well, you, you give me a, you know, a quick thumbnail kind of, uh, of your role. And uh, I think, you know, I've tried to get up to speed a wee bit. But, but hearing from the committee may be helpful contextually. I have a thought. <coughs> The relationship over time between this committee and the Board of Ed, who are elected to their job, um, has been up and down. Sometimes it works well to get, we all work well together, and sometimes we really don't. All I can say is within the last. You aren't looking at me with that. <laughs> 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 I think, our, I think our committee has really has really grown and matured in the past year. We have, and so has the board, and it's worked so so much better. There's just so much more openness, so much more communication, and thank you. You do it by sending us everything. I mean, if you can't read, it, you're in dead trouble. <laughs> But it's good. It's open communication. It works. Really I think well. the board enjoys how much healthier the relationship has gotten. It's well. gotten good. Yeah. Even when we disagree. Yeah. It's yeah. Much right. Disagree. Which we're allowed to do. Yeah. 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 I think that, um, at least from the perspective of this group, we want to let the board know what the community, let the board of ed know what the community is thinking. I guess because we all come from a somewhat more diverse area, we um, we may be more connected to the community in some ways. Uh, so that's what, why we want to be able to let the board know, maybe in some more detail, what, what things we've heard in the community. Um, you know, we outlined them in a letter recently. So that's one of the, I think, th things that we contribute. Um, so we, we're going to continue to try that, to mm -hmm. work that way. And the main thing that we do is work to analyze the school budget and, you know, look, go over it and look at all the line items. And um, that's another area where we think that, um, you know, another group of people analyzing the budget, the public scrutiny that takes place is, um, I think, very important to the, to the way that, it's, that education is funded in this town. Mm -hmm. I think because there is so much public scrutiny, um, the townspeople come together and support the budget. And, you know, it's not an outrageous <laughs> Just budget, uh, but it is a substantial portion of the town's uh, tax base, and I think that um, we can be helpful in that area. Would anybody else like to add? Well, I was going to say we have struggled with what is our mission, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. That's true. it's in in the days of Lois Schneider, it was it was more about what the programs were, right, in the curriculum. in the school, yeah. the mm -hmm. curriculum, That's and right. then when I first joined, um, when Dennis was chair. It became the budget, the budget, the budget, the budget, and the cafeteria. For this is quite a while. <laughs> um, so we have we have ethically, not ethically, just mo trying to figure it out where we should, in, you know, where we should provide input. And I think um, we've come to what Clara said, which is not only do we want to look at the budget, but we want to tell you what we're hearing because mm -hmm. we are on the RTM and we have constituents, and and we also know lots of parents who have children in the school and we hear things we want to 
for a while we didn't do that because we was like, oh, you, you guys know that, you know. But then we thought, no, well, we, what, as an organ of the town, we should be telling you what we're hearing if we think it's valid. So that's kind of where we got to. And, and I don't know if you know, the RTM is divided into districts. Um, I don't there, understand the district. There's yeah. six of them. It's and really <laughs> not important in terms <laughs> of like how we vote. Like it's no, not like I, yeah. No, no, I mean in sense of like, oh, well district six people think this, so I'm no, going to no, vote no. that way. Yeah. Not like that, but, but we do have, a case, we've had a couple of meetings in, I'm in mean, district two. We have meetings with the district so that they can tell us things that they are worried mm -hmm. about. And, is this group representative of the districts? Yes. We all, yes, we we all, all have different districts. So every, every RTM committee has at least two people from each district. From each district. <laughs> this was, I have to, so I have to tell you, I, so I'm on, Barbara and I are on the rules committee of the RTM, and we're the ones at the first RTM meeting who assign the committees. And I have to say, this was a tough one well, to nail. It was, a, 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 like, there was one district where not one person wanted to be on this committee, not one Come on, we're so much person. Made it down. 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 Made it down the critiques back, positive and negative, and it's helpful. Um, I think we figured out that some of the rhetoric on both sides could calm down, and then we could actually hear each other better. And I think it's it's credit it's over the years. Dennis is such a valued board of ed member now; he he really is. But and then Anne coming along, and Clara coming along, and everyone kind of being like, we can take the rhetoric down mm -hmm. and figure out the issues. So. I don't know if it's, I wouldn't say it's a bad reputation. No, it, I think it was a bad reputation in that it system. was there was yeah. a lot of discord Very within the committee that doesn't exist anymore. I right. would say we had a tough year one year. Yeah, um, yes, but we I also got through that and I yeah. think it's gotten better. But I also so. say, and I think we've also gotten better as a committee. Like one of the reasons I did want to be on this committee is because as an outsider watching it when I was on CDSP and as a PTO chair, and, and it's nobody sitting at this table. Um, so many. Com members of the, um, asking questions at budget season that had been answered at Board of Ed meetings. So yes. clearly they were not, you know, up to date on what was happening at Board of Ed meetings, not attending the meetings, not watching the meetings. And it was frustrating to, you know, hear people come back, well, I need an answer to that. Well, I mean, yes. I will never forget one woman on CSP saying to somebody on this committee, if you go to, like, such and such a meeting at the 56 minute mark, there's your answer. And that frustrated me, which is why I came here. And I think everybody in this room now is very good about making sure we are up to date on the issues. And if we're not at a Board of Ed meeting, we are watching a Board of Ed meeting. And I don't think that really happened in the past as much. It's a very, it's a high, it's a, a high commitment committee. I think, I think we're we, very engaged. I, yeah. Um, go ahead, did you and Ed both had something to say? I was gonna say, as a, as a new member to the, to the committee, I was thoroughly warned <laughs> to join. Oh, and coming to the, you know, because it's like, it, it requires a big commitment of time, and we all have busy lives, and we all have a million things going on. So you, you have to walk voluntarily and knowingly that it's going to require to do a proper job, and, and I am one that likes doing things good, to commit to it. Sure. It's not to just show up, you know, once in a blue moon, and like, oh, hi, how are you, what's going on, oh, bye. No, you have to come, you have to listen, you have to engage, you have to go to the meetings because 99% of the questions are always answered somewhere. <laughs> it's in one presentation, in a meeting, in a comment that one of you guys made, something that you presented, so it's, it's there. It's just the fact that you need to commit the time and the energy to listen to what people are saying, and, and it's there. So. I think Ed wanted to say something. Yeah, well, just picking up what you were talking, just talking about on the budget, uh, and it's in here, but, um, you know, when you talk about, you know, you're going to follow what's been done before, which is great, but, like, a number of people on this committee have felt the budget process, and in particular mm -hmm. the presentation of yes. the budget, leaves sort of something to be desired. So I know you're just sort of coming in, and frankly, I don't know if the Board of Ed feels the same way or actually likes the presentation that's there, but, like, what we we have circulated sort of other, this stuff all ends up getting answered, but I think if we went in with something that was maybe, I don't want to say more 
qualitative or visual, but you know, we're just looking at these tables of data and sometimes we end up spending a lot of time on $5,000 or $20,000 <laughs> and you know, we maybe lose sight of right. some of the thematic elements. You know, that's a really good point. Not only do we need to do what we used to do, have done, and it works, but also to look for new ways of doing some things too. Yeah, and like be opening I, to and be open to that. Like also. I think I had said to you when I met you when you first came, <laughs> to expect at, on that budget Saturday that athletics and special education are going to be your two biggest topics. And I think one of the ways to head that off is to put in the budget book the answers to the questions you will get every single year because they're never in the book. And every single year we ask the same exact question. So just put it there. You know you're going to get the question. Have the answer in the book. <laughs> Yeah, I think we, we pointed that out in the letter. I don't know if anybody wants to segue. We, we did send, I don't know if you saw, I did, right? yes, you I saw did. the letter. Yes. And I thought, I don't know if you want to discuss any of that this evening or want any more information from us about things that we mentioned that we, you know, you'd like to have us elaborate a little bit. Um, I know we pointed out that the folks from CDSP had uh, similar concerns as some that we have. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk about that or um, so the board has not had a chance to fully discuss the letter but if the superintendent has some initial thoughts by all means feel sure, free to I mean, share I mean, I'm certainly, I'm certainly uh, when I say that I'm going to do what people have done before it doesn't mean to say I'm not going to do any change yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um, so if I go from recollection and you can put you can if you've got the letter you can you can sort of uh, point me in the right direction um, so your first one, I think, was safety, right? Um, yes, safe, sort of security. Like, security. Security. And, we, and I Dr. Dr. did you want that? Oh, I actually have one. So you have one? Okay. okay. Um, just to point out to folks who might have come late, the, the meeting is being run live on TV. Okay. So just right. so everybody And I appreciate that because that would be the context, <coughs> yes. honestly, of the security. Um, uh, the safety and security of the children and the, the staff is always my first priority and always administrator's first priority and actually always the, the Board of Education's first priority. Um, and sometimes it can, my experience would tell me that sometimes it gets a wee bit uh, frustrating um, for, for members of the public that maybe are looking for a wee bit more information about the security um, and what's going on. Um, but ultimately, uh, very, very respectfully, this is not a forum to discuss that, uh, given the sensitivity of it and given uh, the possible implications of those things. Um, but you should know that uh, since I came into the district, uh, I think my board chairman and the board would understand and, and support that, that my, my priority has been to make sure first and foremost uh, that the safety measures are in place. Now if you were looking, how do you get a wee window into something, Alan, from the budget? Well, okay, well make, perhaps I'll, I will make something up, okay? Let's say there were cameras, but I wouldn't be telling you where I'm putting them. Right. Uh, so you may have a con context of something, uh, but the actual operational uh, yes. uh, implementation, the culture the t uh, of how it's been implemented and where, um, I just, this just is not the forum to discuss that. Um, and it may never be the forum to, to discuss it. Um, I think what, what I can do is look people in the eye and uh, certainly uh, with the board that uh, that is a priority. Um, I want to make, I will share this with you. Right, we are bringing um, a third party, Kerma will be coming in. Um, it's maybe even being new, new to my board church, so I apologize for, but. No, no, no. but no I'm aware. But, that, but we'll, be we bringing, we'll be bringing in someone in to uh, do a third party assessment of how we're done. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh. And has that been done before? Or Pardon, sir? Has that been done before? Or this Here? Been? Yes. Um, uh, I, can't, I don't have the history okay. um, of. So third party assessments have been done um, in the current year. What we've, I mean, the current years, what we've been doing is working closely with the police department over their recommendations, um, and that includes oftentimes executive sessions with the police. Um, but again, you guys don't see that. Yeah, that's right. And all, yeah, and all your first responders have have been very much uh, uh, have reached out to me, right? Um, as I have with them, and uh, we've continued those discussions, uh, but. I know, so, so those are the types of things that are that are ongoing, but specifically how we're doing things, everything like if, if you want to know something about like I don't know, I, I, I can't really speak to this, so we'll leave it at that. I think you get the, the, the essence of it a wee bit. 
I think um, one of the considerations, because our role is more budgetary, is you know we kind of want to make sure you have enough money to do what you want to do. And so, can I, I quote you on that one? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's something that you wouldn't have any trouble with anybody if yeah. you said we're going to have to spend twice as much or whatever it is. I think that people would be behind that. Whereas if you say we're going to hire three new football coaches or something like that, they might say, I don't know. Um, but I think that the security issue, it, I mean, it's everybody's concern. So that's just leave it at that. Okay. Um, regarding the budget book, I think that was the next one on, mm -hmm. on the list. And sorry, you, you, you introduced that. Um, so I have, I have a new, uh, new director of finance and operations, um, Mr. Rule. And uh, so you've got a new superintendent, a uh, new director of finance. Uh, we both have different experiences of, of perhaps what a budget book looks like or might be different, right? Um, can tell a story or otherwise. But I will say this, um, and, and I beg your indulgence just a wee bit because you sort of have to live through something a wee bit in order to be informed of, oh, okay, now I get it, right? Um, and how it might change. I think uh, the, the board has to see and go through our finance committee and go through the full board if they want to see something different. And uh, they're certainly very open to listening to the administration in terms of our ideas. And I also have to make sure that what we're changing in the budget book is also uh, received well by board of finance, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, it would be very, very presumptuous of me to change the budget book in significant detail at the moment and in format because I'm just not informed enough to do that. Uh, but once you run through it once, it's, I, I will say that listen, there's some things that I, uh, that the, the uh, director of finance and I, I think I have some ideas on um, and they will come out. Um, but for a significant change in the orientation of it, uh, we're probably a year away from that to be honest with you of, of really, because it will take that time to get agreement, uh, what it should look like moving forward, what it might look like moving forward. And I know sometimes that can get frustrating um, for people, but uh, you want to do things in a thoughtful and meaningful way. Sometimes you just have to experience things to, to learn from that experience. Um, I understand that. Yeah. That makes sense. You did the same thing in Granby, I presume. You yeah, had same thing. budget, you prepared budgets for, oh, well, for your boards yes. of ed. Yes. Were you, were yours quite different than ours from what you've seen, or, or um, similar? So I think uh, I think I were to describe just the, the difference. Well, first of all, like you have a hundred thousand dollar, a right. million dollar, uh, right, budget, right, 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 right. The first right, thing, right. Right. So, so it's more of it. The yes, second, much right. larger. <laughs> the first thing. Um, yes, there's a lot of there's a lot of data in in uh, our budget here, right? Um, but for $100 million, I think it probably should be. Uh, <coughs> what I'm used to a little bit, and actually I think it's fair to say what, uh, I actually went on and looked at New Canada, just asked yes. to put that Somebody, letter on yeah. after that. So if I, would, if, I were, if I were to capture sort of those things, which is a little bit like the Director of uh, Operations of Finance at the moment, what he's experienced, a wee bit what I experienced, is a wee bit more telling the story mm -hmm. of behind, sort of like, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. okay, so what, what's from the high school or, and the RCs, what, what's really the story behind it. Um, uh, that, that's that maybe just one takeaway from what I observed. And um, from my own experience, I'm used to having board goals, the mission, vision, and board goals, and then the budget supports those goals. Right? So, but that doesn't mean to say that's the way it has to be done. It's just no, no, I just happens. was curious. Okay. So I think part of what you see in the discrepancies is, is at the state level, you really only need a very few broad categories. Right. So if we like provided you what state statute says we need to provide you in this town. I think all of ours, including the board's, heads would pop off being like, oh, no, 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 we get so much more detail. So that's why when you look around, there's so many different ways to do a budget. So I think, you know, speaking of the board, we look forward to hearing, you know, we hired Dr. Adley for that because we thought he was an educational leader and a fresh set of eyes. Um, I appreciate he needs to go through the budget the first time. I think as he makes recommendations, the board will consider both the recommendations and the reasons for those, and then the reasons why the community has evolved in certain ways to include certain things, and kind of weigh those weigh those options and discuss it. And any changes that come out of that can only make us stronger. Great. Yeah, Jim. Um, I'm not sure what I'm asking is correct or not. I've only been on one year. 
but um, I think it would help me if I saw what are the overall learning objectives for the whole system. How were they decided? Was it because of tests students have or um, some higher goals? But I, I don't see even there's so much detail about the money. I had trouble sorting out what are the reasons for each of them. So maybe that could be spelled out more in addition to all the detail about the money. Okay. That's good feedback. Thank you. Thank Anybody you. else want to comment about the uh, budget book itself? Not the book, but I have a similar view, sort of, you know, if we're sitting here three to five years from now, <clears throat> how do we measure, you know, I see the goals, there's a bunch of goals, right, but these seems to like in intermediate steps to me, more than goals. I, you know, how do we measure that we succeeded, right, and if you set up these goals, you know, is it the SAT scores, is, I, I don't know what it is, national merit, student numbers, you know, whatever, whatever the ultimate goal is, and you know, how do we can set those goals and how do we sort of put a limiter on it as far as the expenses go, right? Because we can make this even better school system than it is. Uh, but, you know, sort of, that's what I think would help me too if I see, okay, my vision for the next three or five years is this, this is where I want to get, this is what I have now, this is where I want to get. You know? So, yes, we want to touch on that. Good segue. So, uh, I think there's, there's, there's two things there. Um, one, uh, the board has indicated a desire to engage in strategic planning uh, would, that would uh, clearly delineate some of its major priorities with some of this uh, with accompanying metrics so that's a process that the board is going to start uh, and I'll share it with you that um, I've had some administrators to sort of do like a to start to do like five years thinking out about the budget right not just next year what, what do you think you need in five years right so now we start to, to accumulate an idea over time about, okay, it's not just pulled out of thin air. Sometimes you would have an idea that's a good idea, um, but other times you sort of like uh, water the flower and over time, hopefully, um, if you've identified a need, you may not get it one year, but it may happen the next year if it, if it makes sense to do that. Um, so I've asked my administrative team to engage in that process this year. You won't see it all in here because it's not really that's not the format for it. Um, the board will understand it and see it in some capacity. But uh, sort of uh, building that process into it as well. So, and does everyone know that the board sets goals and objectives in July mm -hmm. for the coming school year? Um, and I think that process, the board's yep. even talked about looking at whether it's due for revision. But those are set every year. And so I actually hear, and I'm interested in how to do what you're both talking about, tie those two documents together a little bit more, but they do exist. And so you should see, you should see some crossover between the two. If you see a board goal is to address social emotional learning, you should not be surprised if in the budget we're asking for money for programs that support social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. If you see, and I'm making this up, because our, our tech rollout has already happened, but if you saw in our goals and objectives to finish like last year, the last rollout of the new computer buys and effective rollouts, you should not be surprised to see technology buys in the budget. But I, I appreciate it and my, the gerbil in my head starts running of how to do that better um, and more succinctly. And I'll certainly give, give that both of your ideas consideration to, to the board does have goals, right? So um, I'll be thinking of how to align the two of those. One, th one thing you mentioned, this is a premier school system, and I'm, I'm not from the industry. I know we have some teachers here and all that, but, you know, I mean, uh, my kids are happy, but is it the premier? How do we compare it with? Who do we compare it with, right? Do we look at the best in the country, the best in the world, the best in Connecticut? What do we look at, you know? Maybe all these exist. Maybe there's a say. Maybe there was a presentation somewhere. Hey, listen, you know, this is how much we spend per student. This is what you should expect in San Francisco, best school. This is what it is. But is this the premier? I don't know. You know, uh, so I don't know if, and I don't want to hire some third party to give us a huge study and pay you know half a million dollars. On the other hand, you know, um, I don't know if, uh, if there's some information. Yeah, we're good. Yes, sir. Are our kids successful? Yeah, I, I was going to say, it's nice to be premier, safe? but I want the regular kids to be able to feel yeah. good, too. Yeah. Yeah. I also want, like, it's terrible for me to say, um, 
I, I would love it if this town weren't filled with tutoring places. Oh my gosh, And yes. to mm. either... Steve used to talk about that. Yeah, to either people are doing it to fill a gap that's not being filled at a school or they're doing it to get that National Merit Scholarship and that's not yeah. fair because that's, that's a first world thing then. That's a one-tenth of one percent. Yeah, and um, so to go back to Anne's point, like, I think it's not a Darien thing. I think it's, it's, you know, probably across Fairfield County and other similar type districts. We do a great job of addressing the really smart kid. I think we do a pretty good job mm -hmm. of addressing the kid at the bottom. It's the kids in the middle that I think where we fail, you know, we need to work on. And it's funny, I just had a conversation today with one of the department chairs <laughs> after an email I sent to Susie De Silva and the department chair actually called me back and we had a fantastic conversation about at the high school that the jump from a 300 to a 400 slash AP class is just too dramatic. It's, it's, it's a, they're like night and day and that's it can't be that way. You, a kid should, from coming from a 300 level class to a 400 level class, it's like they're, they're going into the fire. And it can't be that way. <laughs> you know, you, you bring up, I think that's an important consideration to the tutors. And, and I, if you think of all the variables that go into making a child successful on one of the tests, like the ones you re re reviewed the other night, if you could control for the ones who don't have tutors mm -hmm. and see how, how things shake out then. But I, the other thing that seems to be missing is that um, there's, I don't see too much of a full-on discussion about the curriculum, about what the difference, you know, the stretch between the 300 and the 400 level class. Once the board discussed um, having a 350 level yeah. class. This is, you almost say that. <laughs> but, but interestingly, um, the other night you were talking about um, the number of people who, kids who take APs and you know, moving in that progression. And, and you said people take them, kids take them as juniors, they take them as seniors, maybe a, a few sophomores. And one of the things I wanted to ask was, um, you have uh, kids who are taking the test as junior, who um, that score is gonna be on their transcript. Kid who takes the test as a senior, they will get into college before mm -hmm. that score is known to the college. And I know of situations where kids who got a three or maybe two because they just wanted to try it and they, who that was considered against them when they applied to a college. You, you, don't, have to, you, you don't have to submit it anymore. A lot of schools let you self-report. Yeah. But anyway, there, there have been, place, yeah. but, but to the point that some kids mm -hmm. get into situations yeah. where it's too much for them and they can't handle, you know, the jump or they can't handle the number. Well, somebody of said to me the other night, at, I, had a, I had another meeting the night of the Board of Ed meeting and we were talking about, and her daughter has since graduated from college and I was telling her something that happened to my daughter and she said, oh, well, the trick is when you do that, when you move from that 300 to, you got to hire a tutor to sort of catch you up for a little bit. Mm -hmm and then you're okay. Well, not everybody has time or money for a tutor yeah, <laughs> to catch me up. But that's the reality, I mean, we did it for yeah. my son, but like yeah. that, that's the reality or else don't take the class. I mean, I don't see what the alternative is. I just also worry about the stress on the kids. Yeah. I mean, in this town, you know, you drive around, you see the signs on the back of all the, you know, what private school is my child yeah. going to? Um, and it, I just, I see it with some of the kids in that young woman that wrote the editorial in the paper mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. About being asked wh where she's going to college. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just, I, I understand that we are capable and we have a really good school system, but I just, I, I worry about those kids, you know, feeling like their life is over if they don't get into Penn, you know. So our goal, clearly, throughout our whole system is educate all learners, right? I mean, you hear us say that again and again. So. Certainly when there are concerns, the right thing to do is to reach out to the department chair, the teacher, like go through that chain of command. But certainly I think um, the board's goal is to educate all learners and that's one of the things, if you guys are hearing concerns about leveled classes, that's a, that's a great that's good. resource if you're hearing from your district. If, if you're hearing from your, you know, your friend, we'd like a little more, although encourage your friend to talk to their teacher. Um, but I think <coughs> that, that sure. certainly our goal and we are, we are committed to doing is making sure there are all learners. I have three kids, <coughs> three totally different learners. It would have been nice if two of them could have been similar, so I wasn't reinventing the real each time, but all families have that. And so, you know, if there are concerns, for I think what I, I, like what I had said to her, they wish there were more transparency with 
the progression. I, like I said to her, I said, if you're in middle school, nobody tells you that your eighth grade math class can affect your 10th grade science placement. So Until 10th those, grade science well, placement comes they're along. Online. They do. They're, they're, they're they're no, the they don't. The teachers do not tell you that. They well, really don't. We've actually raised that at the board level, and yeah. it is in some of the documents that Susie has created in terms of... How many um, people at the middle the school who are not at board of ed meetings are pulling up Susie's documents? So I, I actually, know, but, but I, I do think, Teresa, so. I do think we have raised it. Yeah. We have raised it. Because I do know, again, the personal experience, right? right? Like I've gotten a call that says, okay, if you take this, well, what does this mean? Right. So I do think some of, and that's the great thing about what happens here, when it gets brought up, it helps inform us on what questions to ask, right? right? And so bring it up, you know, bring it to us as much as you can. Well, Sheila, did you have something? Yes, I don't, we're focusing more on high school. Right. And, and, um, and the very I'm thinking point. about starting in kindergarten. We hear how much stress children and teenagers are under now. It's more and more and more. And on the other hand, I've read recently that many school districts are saying, don't give homework in elementary school and cutting back on all of that, giving them more recess. So I don't know who, who are the people who can look at the overall picture and think about, is it, is it an appropriate level of stress that we're putting on the children from age five up? Didn't, did the board at one time so we did, So policy? just so you know, the district did that a while ago where elementary school yeah. kids weren't given tests or homework. Mm -hmm. Then they went to middle school. They weren't and ready they for the amount of tests and homework they thought. <laughs> they had so no skills. Yeah. It needs, yeah. Talk. Yeah. It needs yeah. to be. Yeah. It depends yeah. on the kids. So if you'd like to know who, please meet Dr. Adam. And he's your host in that. That's true. Yep. And then he, he needs to make yep. recommendations yeah. to the board as effect to our policy. Um, what I would reinforce is there are two different things. And as much as you guys can help us reinforce this is great. There is board policy. And then there is the day-to-day -day operations of the school, for which Dr. Adley gets all the credit mm -hmm. and the board is out of. And so there are administrative regulations. So in terms of homework, when we, people talk about often there's a homework policy, there are administrative regulations at the, both the middle school and I believe even the high school, although I think when you get to those upper level classes, those admin regs change. They're actually not board policy. Mm -hmm. um, when something comes to us, we're looking to make it general enough that it fits the whole district and it's sustainable. And so I do think people use the word interchangeably. Um, I get lots of calls and people want to tell me about like their bus or their sports team or their teacher's yellow folder and it needs to be green. I politely thank them and send them to Dr. Adley because the <laughs> board really can't get into that level. We're just statutorily prohibited from doing it. And as much as I might agree on the yellow or the green folder, my opinion is only worth the same as your opinion is on that matter. So now holistically, in terms of making those, it's Dr. Adley's to work with his team and come back and to recommend to us. I appreciate the concept. <laughs> and I also think it's funny, as, as a foreigner that wasn't educated in this country, I think my point of view sometimes is like, you are all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we're doing to our kids in this area of the world is insane. Yeah. I wasn't raised under this amount of pressure. I went to an average. But neither team. neither were we, yeah, we and we were raised. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a culture that has yeah. changed. Yeah. 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 Where, yeah. where what, what do you do? Do you just ignore it? Do you adapt it? Then adapting means that you need to have the tutor in places, mm -hmm. and you need to fill all these holes and build these kids to be, you know. Einstein at 16, which right. is crazy. Right. Do you ever, um, have you considered having um, graduates of Darien High School, um, inter, you know, have them send a questionnaire or something, how did, how did your high school education here prepare you, um, you know, were you prepared, that kind of thing, or I know sometimes uh, kids used to come back to the high school after their first year in college and be on a panel and talk about it. They still do Something that you've got to everybody. Doing like a, a more holistic approach to grads, it's self-reporting. Yeah, it's it is. optional. It is. But I know guidance is working on doing just like that. They often kind of reach out to kids they know, but mm -hmm. they're looking at kind of doing a more blanket questionnaire mm -hmm. for those who would. Mm -hmm. I'm right about that. In the spring, um, yes. Megan Emanuelson, the new director of guidance, six through twelve, talked about that. Okay. 
Um, does, uh, do we want to leave this subject? We had two more things in our letter. If we talk about athletics, we'll probably be here probably get 10 <laughs> Let's minutes. Just say maybe, athletics is an issue. 10 more minutes. I know we'll leave it was, at that. <laughs> there was also a question about or a concern about substituted um, expenses, and I don't know, maybe that's not fair to ask you, Dr. Adley, about that because um, you just got here. And um, Well, I, I took a quick look at uh, just a, over the past four years, and uh, there's different types of substitute expenses. There's the short term, you know, it's the, the daily. There's the long term, which really uh, they had a couple of wee spikes. Um, but there's there tends to be stories behind those ones. Um, the long term, I don't think, is right, the And uh, you've got special education, and you've got professional development. For the most for the most part, though, without like, uh, going too much into the data, it seemed to be fairly consistent. So I'd be curious. It was interesting to me that. You tagged along with the survey, right? The question about the, the climate survey was mm -hmm. sort of attached to the. Right. Um, that's so, yes. Um, so I'm sort of putting one and two together, right? Um, so mm -hmm. I took a look at the survey um, across the schools, and uh, overall, you've got people who are very happy. Okay. Um, so I'm just saying, like, like I said, the staff is like I'm tremendous. Sorry. I'm also telling you that they're overall very happy. Right. Um, at least the, some of the stuff that I looked at. Right? Um, uh, so I have to sort of uh, ponder that question a little bit more and see because the, the short term substitute for the last four years have been fairly consistent. Uh, so I have to sort of like beg more questions. Uh, data just sort of like invites more questions, right? Um, and this is one where it would invite a wee bit more clarity and. Uh, Maybe candor, maybe uh, whatever, whatever that kind of means, or what people are looking for. Um, I'm the one that started this subject oh, okay. several years ago, and I didn't call you out, Janet. I mean, I, I know knew where it came from. <laughs> I, the only point was that the daily substitute, the number, the amount of money spent on daily substitutes, mm -hmm. was not included. Long term and POD was always there. And year after year, that the daily number isn't there. It wasn't, in my mind, questioning why the number was whatever it was. It was just that it was missing. And so this sort of average daily number of yeah, and that to most people's way of thinking is the is the major kind of substitute. And it it's always comes back. You know, people get sick, they have babies, and. Professional development, and so one year it was a big deal that they pulled out all the professional development stuff, leaving out the daily. So that's really the beginning and the end of it all, not the reason for it. Oh, well, I, you know, I appreciate your, your clarity. Right. Sometimes it's just like the matter of asking. Like, no, it was asked what, pretty what, clearly what and was not shown. And at one meeting, our former superintendent was looking texting people and trying to find out, and the Board of Ed chairman came up and showed me these numbers, but so oh, that's, well, that's all that it comes from, really, well, the well, amount of money that. involved, that's helpful to me. not tying it to um, morale or yeah, that sort of thing. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. That's, that's right. very helpful. Plus, I have been a substitute, and Darianne, I'm not anymore. Um, sometimes it's helpful to know sort of the overall um, look of the staff. You know, do we have a veteran staff mostly? Mm -hmm. Do we have a staff of a lot of new people? So that sort of lets you so you get some insight into what kind of expenses for substitutes you might have. You know, you're going to get young people having baby. You know, so do you have sort of a composite? Are you looking to have sort of a composite statement about? You know, we have a young staff now, or we have a more veteran staff. You know, well, I mean, sure maybe don't have to tell us, but I mean just. Does that give you some insight oh, into yeah. that kind of expenses? That's, that's so I'm going to caution him before he calls anybody old. Yes. <laughs> um, but I would say the bulk of our staff is at the top of the step scale. Which that's shows right. that they, they they're more veteran in their craft. Yeah. Okay. How old they are, I don't even think we're allowed to ask. No, no, no. Maybe some of them not. And if they ask yeah. your kids, they have to know. <laughs> I'm always like, older or younger than me? So, <laughs> I know you have athletics there, and I know it's late. If you guys can just touch upon, because I think Teresa's right, I know what budget season looks like. As the, Krista will be leaving us by then, so enjoy her while you know she'll be doing, watching. <laughs> she'll be doing the budget on another <laughs> side, and we wish her well there. The but we will miss Krista's questions. I know. Yeah. I, I, if you can do it in like just a few minutes, a snapshot, 
I know. Just okay, okay, you know, I can. I can. Okay, so from a, I would say from a budgetary perspective, yeah. if you can include in the book without without handing it to us the day of, but having it in the book that we get beforehand, break out the teams, how many kids are on there, the cost per team. We, we went to athletics? Because she said we have to do it very fast. Okay. Well, I'm just saying if you oh, can give okay. a flavor because um, that's not, you were know, talking about all the very fast. snack yeah. 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 Okay. in budget season. Okay. I think, I think we've talked sorry, about some it. Of it's about money. Some of it's, it's uh, perennial. Some of it, yeah, so it's from a budgetary policy. perspective, I think there's it's, that. And then there's policy. That's a whole. And, and if that the policy can, is there is no policy, yeah, there's I think no policy. that's fine. And if like, there is a policy. It's a constant policy. debate because you just have people that have different opinions. Yeah. It's, no one's going to agree. It's just a matter of. I, I think, I think um, the DHS PA chairs and Ellen Dunn would appreciate a policy so that they are not inundated with phone calls. <laughs> I think that would be, and a policy uh, that if it does exist is enforced. Yeah, a policy on what? I on think what? Yeah. Sorry, the, the yeah. things that, I mean, I don't, I, I have my opinions on these things, but like, I, I'm not, we're not all gonna agree. Cut versus no cut, how parents fund teams versus not, um, maybe those are the. Training of the, the training of the coaches or the well, major PD a, and yeah, all that. But, um, but it was just like, yeah, when, whether they can, have their camps at the same time. Like, I'm not expressing an opinion. I mean, I have an opinion. I'm not expressing one. But like, the cut right. or no cut. If it's up to each coach, then let's just say that is the policy, and yeah. then we can stop talking about it because that is the yeah, policy. Yeah, that's what we have not done, and I think that's what we need to and do. So and we other just districts end up with, have more robust yeah. athletic policies. Yeah. we do have. I mean, it's not that it's not absolute. It's more like it practice. More robust. Yeah, it's more. I, I think that's part of what people are sort of. They don't like. Well, it's not, they don't like what's happening, but it's not like you can point to and say, well, this is the policy that we discussed. Right. We took all into opinions. This is what we discussed. Right. So what I will say is it gets a little back into, um, and this and Ed is right on the money with what you're going to hear. So that's why I want Dr. Adley to hear yeah. it. Um, it. Again, it goes back a little bit to policy versus whether it's a day-to-day -day operations administrative regulation. And so that is sometimes where I think um, the word choice you know, does the board need a policy on this matter, or is the administration proposing a regulation? And there are going to be different opinions on what and whether that is. But this is the conversation that fairly, I think, the Education Committee has raised several times. And so while I would say that we've come to con a consensus on some of it, even though sometimes people either don't see it that way or want a different answer, there's, there's some lingering questions that, um, you know, we, I imagine we will continue to hear from you, and I imagine from the board we'll continue to work on, and hopefully Dr. Adley, over his breath of time, can help solve. But sorry, but just, and just, just for me, if we had the discussion and you said, well, there doesn't need to be a policy on that, so effectively the policy is there is no policy, we're leaving it up to the school, I'm fine with that as an answer. Like, I don't want to keep talking about this every yeah. year. So cut no cut is actually there right now. Okay. It is there. There is no board policy. It is up to the coach. Okay. It is an administrative yeah. decision at this point. Now, so, and what is, what is um, helpful often is if we're not messaging that clearly enough, like we're at right here, then we need to hear that so that we can put the questions to that early. But and I will then say, board I members might board also raise questions, questions and say, I believe there what? should be a policy. Yeah. <laughs> That's not terrible finishing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and the point being that you also might hear from the tables, and I'm looking at Krista because she does a good job, and I understand where her viewpoint is on this. She feels that the board may need a policy in some areas where they're not, and that's sometimes why it comes up again because you have board members who feel strongly, and that is their right. Um, so I would tell you, on one specifically, at the moment there is a decision on it. Um, that doesn't mean different perspective or another board member raising their hand saying, "I want us to look at a policy again that's well within their purview." And yeah, I think that since I've been on the board, and even when I sat in your seat, the policy had not been addressed on the from the education. Uh, ed, uh, athletic perspective, just to set the guidelines. I mean, what is our objective in athletics? Why do we have athletics? And that might drive whether we cut or not cut. What is our objective? And then I think that would flow right into what Dr. Adley is doing. So I do hope in the next year that from a policy perspective, we could give a little bit uh, better guidelines for the administration, which will drive many of these decisions. Some people say that education is a right and athletic participation is a privilege. Do you see that, um, policy or the, or the way teachers deal with kids and their training and professional development, should that be similar to what you expect of coaches if you have a policy that says that a teacher should not tutor her own kids 
for money, for pay? Should you have a policy that says a coach shouldn't encourage his students to go to an off-site training facility where he has a financial interest? I mean, are, are, are you thinking of it as athletics is over here, academics is over here, they're not necessarily going to match up? Or do you think what we do in one place we're going to do in another? So I think um, it would be fair to ask me that opinion and stuff as I learn what the actual practice is here. Okay. But at some point, you're going to say, Dr. Ali, do you think cuts or no cuts should be a policy or not a policy, right? And once I understand what's in place and what's not in place, I'll be able to share with the board uh, my opinion on, on some of these things. I don't think it's, it's always just one or the other, right? Okay. Um, uh, they tend to live in the gray, gray area. That's just kind of a job a wee bit. Um, I don't like I don't like to pit programs against other programs. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, no, I, I, that's not what I meant. I'm, I just I, you know I've heard people say, well, you know, you have professional development yes. for teachers. Why don't you have it for coaches? Or well, you, you should. Or, you, you should know, have professional development. So, and I do think again, sometimes this goes to just not having information. Coaches receive professional development. Yes. They must. Yes. They must go through training. They must go through, and so they are professional organizations that set those standards. And at the moment, those are set by SEAC. And teachers must, the coaches must engage in professional development. Coaches have their own kind of wonky version of tenure. I don't think most people know that. Um, SEAC sets work conditions, which includes who can coach when and how many kids. So oftentimes, um, here in Darien, we may be able to do it better. We may think we may be able to do it better. But at the moment, our governing rules, if they are being adhered to, Coaches follow SEAC and their guidelines, and that's kind of the professional organization for if we have a question, we could defer to. But, but see, what I'm thinking of is that a parent shouldn't have to ask if a coach has had professional development. It should be evident from the way the coach treats their team and their children. The parent shouldn't have to say, hey, does that coach know how to treat a kid? <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that, that's yeah. not, so that the shows. So it that way the parent needs to work that up the chain of command of their concern or communication, um, but, as you might imagine, people might feel differently. They about might be afraid particular. to do that because then their child will have to sit on the bench or they won't be able to be oh. on the team. You know, isn't that, isn't, isn't that what's all, this is all caught up in, that people are sort of, they want a policy, they want an elected official to deal with their problem because they don't want to put their kid in the middle of a dispute between the parent and the teacher, the parent and the So coach. elected officials can't manage personnel. And what we, the reason we can often is because if there's a grievance, it comes to us. So, again, <laughs> meet Dr. Adley. He's in the hot seat. If someone has a concern and they can choose how to bring that, but quite honestly, if you come to Krista, Katie, or myself and say, I don't like Mrs. X or Mr. X, yeah. what we're going to tell you is that is the last thing we can weigh on, right. on because do, if we were even to say in a grocery yeah. store, like, yeah, I think he or she is crazy, and then they grieve something with us, they could say, I don't want Mrs. McNamara. Well, she said they were great. Mrs. Ackman said I was crazy. I, right. I, and so you right. will this find us almost, yeah. almost gagged, um, and, and so unfortunately. Like so do we have standards for professionals? Yes. Do we believe our professionals should yes. live up to those standards? Yes. Is it the superintendent's job to ensure that his employees are working at the standards that the board has set? Yes. Can, can I say that I, this is a good point, time to say I think if the Board of Ed clarified just what you were talking about, it would be wonderful because people think I know everything because I'm on this committee. And lots of people think if you're just on the RTM, you know everything. And we learn so much listening to you and that division between you and the administration on those big, big subjects, I think would help everybody. Maybe you wouldn't get so many phone calls asking <laughs> what doesn't stop <laughs> but I think to your point yes maybe maybe we need to do some well, I mean, I'm just on general topics yeah, I'm just learning this now yeah and I've been around for a while I think that would be a huge help because people don't really know what the Board of Ed does yeah. a lot of people don't understand town government yeah. maybe right before the election that's a good time to yes. refresh for the new boards coming that's in or the new idea. groups that's as you guys assign idea. them but the, 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 turning it over to from you and why you can't respond, I think, would be very, very helpful to everybody. As you might imagine, there are times I want to respond to them. <laughs> <laughs> right.
Um, so I think that's helpful, and, and uh, I didn't want to open up to a crazy discussion on bugs, but I do think Dr. Adley needs to hear some of the concerns, and we can tell him, but it's good for him to hear them from you, so thank you. Can I just ask a quick question about athletics? Is it true that the budget is kind of based on historical practices mm -hmm. right now, the athletic budget? Is that right? Um, well, so I think the question, I need a little more on the question. So our athletic director budgets for what he predicts his needs will be in the coming years. So it is a zero-based budget. If you're talking about some of the um, traditional practices like who pays for what facilities, yes, those are traditional agreements that have existed over time. Okay. I, I'm not sure which, I'd answer you more, I'm just not sure which part. Right, well, you know, when we look at the pages that we have about, you know, this much goes to football, this much goes to the cross, you know, this much goes to swim and dive. It's, it seems like it's not as if every athlete gets the same <clears throat> dollar spend. And I was or just the wondering. Same percent. Right. I just you know and 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 <laughs> I'm <my> song. <laughs> so they don't. Yeah. So it's a zero based budget. And I'm not saying that. Should, I'm just saying I'm one like when I was you know either watching or attending meetings. It just seems like the the way that it's done is not so much. Um, a percentage per sport, or it's just it's just this historical practice right now is what. Is so that, yes, no, um, well, I don't think it's okay. a historical practice. I think Please correct. Yeah, yeah it is not, um, e and each child also does not get the same dollar amount. So the answer I use only because I have a soccer player. So if the soccer team wants to get mad at me, I'm totally fine with them saying this. Is it inherently costs more to put a football player on the field than it does a soccer player? A helmet, pads, versus shin guards, which, by the way, no one wants the district to buy shin guards. That's gross. <laughs> Trust me. So inherently, there are some sports that are just less expensive. And so um, the way Mr. Manfredonia or, or whomever the athletic director would do a zero base budget, what do I need to run each sport at its year? What may be historical is he might say, I typically have this number of kids, or I typically see an uptick. And I'm seeing an uptick in this sport. So like rugby seems to be growing, both girls and boys. Girls, I think, is a club. Boys, rugby seems to be growing. OK, at first I had, I don't know rugby. Excuse me, rugby people. Rugby you know. work, focus on the right now. OK, sorry. <laughs> if, it, if they only have seven see, people on the only field. Them. <laughs> but now I, I'm seeing an uptick, and I'm 12. Like, Do I have enough coaches? So you might see it there. So that's why you don't see, and some people have suggested it. It's a different way of budgeting, saying every child gets three hundred dollars, and anything after that, parents cover. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to learn. I'm not. I'm not making a suggestion. Yeah. I'm just so trying currently, to understand. it's zero base, okay. and then it's based on what the administrator predicts that team will need in order to run the program. But there's also been some debate um, for some people about, I don't know, as a parent, they have to contribute more to this and more to that. And again, maybe the policy is not to have a policy and to just go with what's been in the past. But that's just, again, something where I feel we keep talking about it. Because the answer that you gave, like on the cut, no cut, which I think is a perfectly good answer, OK, well, I don't feel I need to talk about it again this year, because we're living with, uh, with the policy that's in place. Now, there may be people on the committee who don't like the policy, just like there are will be people in town who don't like this policy, but that's... Yeah, so in terms of our, our facilities usage fees, we are also at a point that the board has said, at the moment, we honor the traditional agreements. Respectfully, Mrs. McNamara very strongly would like the board to adopt some different version of that. She has strong feelings on it, so you often see it come up again, because there are members who say, I know we've discussed this, I know we have it, but I still feel strongly about but it. But then let's go Which back. Well, That's not for you guys to come up with then, is what you're saying. The district should come up with a new agreement if well, we see Well, I think there's two things, too, though. At your point, though, when you use the term policy, that's set by the board of Correct. men. So just to be clear, yep. there's practice, and there's historical practice, for example, which is I feel is one example in the athletic field where it's been historical, is the use of what equipment is bought. You know, the example that Tara gives about the shin guards versus the lacrosse team versus the football team versus the hockey team, et cetera. That's just been practice. And as to why we do it that way, perhaps that could be outlined better from the board's perspective in a policy that would help direct the administration and their practice. I think, that's, <clears throat> I think that would be helpful for all of us. Then we're all in the same language. So I would say with the, um, 
the board has done is come to certain understandings, and they have, and and that's how the budget is developed based on those understandings. Every year, people do have the opportunity to say, "I'd like to change the understanding," yeah. and so that's why sometimes you see these things come up again. But on how we fund for facilities, on cut no cut, the board has said at the moment we're keeping with our practice. That might change. That might change this budget season. I, I don't I don't know. Um, but the questions are good. I know sometimes it's really hard to get them again and again. It's really hard for us when we get them again and again, but it means that they're still out there and they're worth grappling with. We, do, we did ice hockey and we bought a lot of ice. <laughs> for a lot of money. <laughs> and we haven't changed it in probably since you did it. That's since those years. Yeah, we haven't changed. <laughs> but I guess when you, when you talk about the cut, no cut, and the expenses being different for each team, I guess it's true that certain teams don't cut. I mean, like football, I think, don't they have a ninth grade team? No cutting. No, no cutting, cutting, cutting on football. football. So then yeah. everybody who plays has to get equipment. So when somebody looks at the spreadsheet and says, football, look at how expensive it is. Well, should somebody tell football you have to cut people because you really are spending an exorbitant amount of money? Or should you say that's that coach's decision? Everybody loves the program. Stick with it. Well, so that's why it comes up every year. Right. Because there could be a year where the board says, I have to make cuts, and I'm making cuts in athletics. There, I mean, that's why you hear some of this here. At the moment, the board has been satisfied that we are comfortable with our budget. We are comfortable with coaches making these decisions. Any factor that changes could change a budget decision. At the moment, the budgets we bring forward to you are the budgets of nine of us vote that we think is educationally appropriate for the for our children. And so we ask you to support it. And if that changes next year or in five years, you know, hopefully with some of the strategic planning, it's a little more predictable um, so people can know. But, but you know, the, another thing that happened is when the economy tanked in 2009, people said... 2008, September 16th. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> were I gonna, was there. Uh, <laughs> we were all there. No, but people um, wanted to um, perhaps cut some of athletic the athletic budget, and parents said, oh, please don't do that. We will pay, and we had a pay-to-play, a year of pay-to-play. I do remember a certain member whom I love dearly said cut freshman and JV sports. Yeah, <laughs> there were people who said that. I think he was and trying to make a statement. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yes, every budget season, it is possible. And in some ways, that's why you don't have uh, policies that lock you in to budgetary um, commitments. But I think overall, what we want to get away from is making these big, if not practice decisions, I won't say policy, but... I don't think it's a board debate. It's, it's a, no, but they were trying to get away from doing debate. this during budget season. These should all be yeah. decided away right. from budget yeah. season. So yeah, when we get to the budget, right. I think that's what we've been working on over the years, and I think we're getting more successful at that. Peter, did you want to make sure you make a Yeah, point? I just want to make a quick comment, not regarding sports anymore, but mm -hmm. regarding the budget season. Uh, it was very helpful when we sat down with the administration couple of weeks before we actually voted on the budget. And I noticed that this year seems to be the conversation somewhere f for, you know, sooner. And I want to confirm or question really is, there's a week after the Super Saturday, there seems to be a Board of Education meeting with this committee, with the RTM Finance Committee, with the Board of Finance regarding the budget. Is the administration going to be present to answer our questions as well, or is it going to be just the board? Um, so typically you submit your questions to us, and we come with the administration and the answers. Mm -hmm. I think there are two Saturdays earmarked um, to allow you guys to decide yeah. which one you'd like. Okay. You know, it's not both. It's yeah. usually one, although you're always welcome at public comment. But yes, we do bring the administration. Um, Dr. Adley and I both get in the hot seat. Yeah. You guys pepper us away. Um, <laughs> yeah. and no, it was in, I think it was in April or sometimes. It's great that oh, yes, it seems no, to we, be we in we January now. We do it twice. Yeah, we do it twice. We do it, twice. Twice. We do it, twice. We do it okay. once at budget. Gotcha. We always do it right. Good. And gotcha. then we get That's helpful, right? In, the, the Board of Finance could modify yeah. our budget, and then we would need to do it again, or yeah. if there are still outstanding questions, it kind of helps us to answer your questions in January. And the, and the election coming up, and the committees get reassigned in November, because so we may all be here in budget season, and some of us may not. So, you know, that could change, too. Yeah. So um, are, there, are there any other comments? I have last comment, totally unrelated to anything, but something you, one, of, one of us, one of you mentioned here is preparedness of the kids for, the, for their uh, lives. Uh, does the school, the high school, have financial literacy? 
education class? Yes, or yes. My daughter is currently in personal okay. finance and investing. She just put it together a stock Your portfolio. Oh, but my freshman's taking it next year. Yeah. I mean, next right. semester. It's well, a half semester. What have you learned? Oh, yeah, okay. a yes, it's a sophomore. It's a great source of pride, but it's also a great source of. Discussion. Yes, mm -hmm. discussion, right. animated discussion. We certainly appreciate your time and the yes, time of all the board members. Oh, thank you for your invitation. Thank you for Okay. Much. Um, and I'm sure you'll maybe see us again at some of the Board of Ed meetings, and mm -hmm. maybe, you know, you'll see uh, our meetings online if, or if you want to uh, know what we're doing. Um, we'll probably be having some more. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, oh, I guess we need a motion to adjourn. Say good night, Chief. Okay. 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 All right, so good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Barb. 945. 845.